Draven's back after being buffed, and with a new VIP mechanic, he becomes incredibly powerful. The comp also has a ton of variations and options based on your augments, so let's dive into all of that. The build is relatively flexible, as we only have 5 core units for the comp. We have Draven as the main carry, Cinder to be a debonair synergy bot, but she's also better than Talon as she provides anti-assassin utility. Leona is our main tank and to be a debonair unit, Braum for 2 bodyguards and also to be a powerful CC unit. We also need at least 2 challenger units in at all times. Quinn or Kai'Sa is what you'll be running most of the time. A standard level 8 version of the comp looks like this where we add in Silco for two scholars and to provide more frontline, Trindamir and Kai'Sa also get added in for four challengers. Another variation is this, here we replace Braum with Galio and add in Seraphine and Senna for three socialite. This gives a ton of power to Draven, but you only want to run this if the socialite hex is in the back two rows. There are more variations that you can run depending on your augments, so I will cover those in the late game part of the video, but if you are a newer player, I recommend you just stick to this variation until you get more comfortable with the comp. Draven is our main carry, so we prioritize making items for him first. He has one core item, and that is Infinity Edge. This item allows us to hit for a boatload of damage, and also multiplies the additional damage we get from the axes. The second item wants to be another damage item. Which one you run depends on how many challengers you're running, as well as if you have any attack speed augments. Rageblade is really nice if you're only running two challengers and have no attack speed augments. This allows Draven to stack up really fast, and scale incredibly well into the fight. You generally have to run a tankier frontline to let him scale up and get value from this item if you're using it. If you have enough attack speed, you want to go for Giant Slayer, Deathblade, Hurricane, or QSS. Giant Slayer is great into comps with high HP targets like 3 star units or bruisers. Deathblade is overall amazing as it gives you a ton of AD, which scales well with both IE and Draven spell. Hurricane is nice if you get stuck on a tank. This item also allows you to get the Challenger reset off more often as you're hitting multiple targets. QSS is great as it gives you additional attack speed and lets Draven keep attacking without getting CC'd. The third item wants to be a healing or defensive item. This can be Hodge, BT, or Edge of Night. Hodge is what I prefer as it gives you more damage while also providing some healing. As long as you're fairly attentive with your positioning, it's enough for Draven to heal back up for his splash damage. BT is great as it allows you to heal every single fight. And Edge of Night is great in lobbies that are very assassin heavy. A question you might have is, where's Last Whisper? Draven is a front to back carry, so surely he will need this to not get stuck on tanks. The thing is that part of Draven's spell makes him always ignore 25% of armor, and when he is VIP, he will ignore 50%. Therefore, you won't have a tough time against any comms unless they're running more than 4 bodyguards. And as of now, that is not very common at all, as Bruiser's and Colossus frontline is still favored in a lot of comps. You will run into two bodyguard players like ourselves a lot of the time, but 50% ignore is enough to get through them. After we have itemized Draven, we want to itemize Leona or Braum. Since we're only running two frontline units, having tank items on them is important to make sure we tank for a long enough time. The best ones in order are Warmogs, Redemption, Dragon's Claw, Bramble Vest, Cece Rod, and Stoneplate. Other great items for this comp are Aura items to buff up Draven even more such as Zeke's, Banshee's Claw, and Chala's and also Morella on Kai'Sa to apply it to the entire enemy team. If you get a spatula, there are a lot of good options. The best emblem to make is Challenger's Bad. This allows you to drop Silco for another Challenger and then play 6 or 4 Challengers. This will buff up Draven's attack speed to absurd amounts. Assassin Emblem is also fantastic. This allows Draven to get into the backline right away. Run IE and BT as your second and third item in this case and replace Syndra with Talon for 2 Assassins. Debonair Emblem also works well as you can drop Cinder and Silco for two more challengers. The best augments for this comp are any Backfoot, Bodyguard Heart, Emblem or Soul, any Celestial Blessing, Challenger Heart, Emblem or Soul, Challenger Unity, Debonair Heart, Emblem or Soul, any Disintegrator, On Guard, Irresistible Charm to take 20% less damage, any Phalanx, Socialite Heart, Emblem or Soul if the spotlight is in the back two rows, any Weak Spot to ignore even more armor, Assassin Emblem or Crown only so we can put it on Draven, Portable Forge, Very VIP, Any Thrill of the Hunt, Verdant Veil, vale, and Share the Spotlight if it's in the good hex that game. I mentioned a lot of augments there, and the best ones out of those are Celestial Blessing, Challenger Heart, Disintegrator, Assassin Crest, Thrill of the Hunt, and Verdant Veil. Vale. The carousel priority for this comp is Sword, Glove, Bow, then Belt. Since this comp rules mostly around 2, 3, and 4 cost units, we can find some of the units for this comp early, but we need an early game carry for Draven. The best openers for this comp is Ezreal with either Innovator or Bodyguards, Talon with Assassins, or Warwick with Chemtech Challengers. 
Once we have found our comp, we need to make items, and as a general rule, we want to make an item if we have four or more components. Some good items to build in the early game that transition well into Draven late game are Bramble, Deathblade, Declaw, IE, Redemption, Hurricane, or Warmugs. We don't want to make Giant Slayer, Rageblade, BT, or Hotch in the early game, as they are either bad at that point or not very flexible. But if you are forcing Draven, you can slam them to get stronger right now. Your early game strategy will depend a lot on how good your opener is. In some games you play for a loss streak, and in some games you play for a win streak. If you want to learn more about how to play the early game, check out my guide where I go in depth on that subject. After the crouch round, you should have more direction towards a comp, and the general requirements to play Draven is to have at least one sword for IE and another component for a Draven item. The units we have don't really matter as we just transition into Draven later in the game, but if we already have some bodyguards and challengers, it will make the transition a lot easier on us. During the mid game, you always want to hold Draven and Leona if you're not playing them, and you want to hold other units as well if you don't lose Eco for holding them. If you're weak in the mid game, it's usually best to roll level 7 and all in there. You can either do this on stage 3 5 or 4 1. You will only all in on stage 3 5 if you went on an 8 loss streak and you're losing a ton of HP. What you're looking for when rolling will be a bit different every single game, but it wants to look something like this, where you're looking to stabilize off of Draven 1 star while having at least 2 challengers and 3 debonairin. The last 2 slots can be anything depending on your augments, but adding in another 2 challengers here also works. During the mid game, it's also important to scout. This is so we can see how many other people are playing Draven. This comp can support 2-3 players at max, so if you see more than that going for it, consider pivoting to another comp like Jin, Irelia, or Sivir. On stage 4-1, you will want to be level 7, and from here you have two different options. You can either roll at level 7, or go for a fast 8. Since our main carry is a 4 cost, and we want to hit some legendaries as well, rolling at level 8 is a lot better. But since this comp is not reliant on any of those legendaries, we can get away with rolling at 7 in some cases. The games where you're all at level 7 are when you're 70 to 60 HP or lower, you're loss streaking, or if a lot of other players are rolling down here as well. When rolling down at level 7 on 4 run, it's very similar to rolling down on 3 5. You want to stabilize with a board that looks something like this. The goal from there is to go level 8 on 5 1 and then roll for the rest of your comp there. So try not to roll below 10 to 20 gold as we need the money to go level 8 later in the game. Before you roll at level 8, it's very important to know which units you're looking for. This is where all the previous scouting we have done comes in handy. With our information on what the rest of the lobby is playing, we can more easily tech in champions and synergies that benefits us the most against the current lobby. A big tip when playing debonairs is to buy a VIP you don't need, then sell it. Now you will not be offered that unit in VIP format until you buy another one. For example, if you buy VIP Leona and sell it off right away, now only regular Leonas can show up in the shop until you buy a different VIP. This is key to keep in mind as we really want VIP Draven for this comp to shine. Another thing to note is that a debonair unit only has a 10% chance to be a VIP when you don't have the debonair trait active. But when it is active, the percentage is increased to 75%, meaning you will hit VIP Draven most of the time before two starring him. So always have 3 debonairs in when doing your rolldown. I've mentioned that your augments can change what you play in this comp. If you get plus 1 challengers, you can drop Silco to play 6 challengers, or you can drop Warwick Trindamere here to play 4 bodyguards or 2 enchanters. If you get plus 1 bodyguard, drop Silco to play 4 bodyguards. You never drop Rom to play Leona with only 2 bodyguards in this case, as then you would be lacking major frontline. If you get plus 1 debonair, drop Cinder to play 6 challengers, or you play 4 bodyguards or 2 enchanters. You never go for 5 debonairs as the units we're adding in don't provide any utility, nor does Draven benefit that much from the additional AP. Once you've hit your board at level 8, you have two different options from there. The first one is to roll for Draven 3 star. This is definitely the first or eighth kind of play, but since you don't get that much out of going level 9 with this comp, it's the preferred play in most cases. But I only do this if I have 5 or more Dravens, I'm uncontested, and I also have enough golden HP to do a second large rolldown later. The second option is to go level 9. This will require you to be relatively healthy, typically 40 HP or more, and it also requires you to have 2 star the vast majority of your non legendary units. But the more HP and gold you have, the less 2 stars you generally need, as you will be able to make it to level 9 sooner, and also with more gold. If you're high rolling and you're able to go level 9 with a lot of gold, the most capped version of this comp looks like this. This is very expensive to pull off, so you will only be able to do this in a couple of your games. General positioning with this comp looks like this. Syndra is next to Draven to throw away any assassins that come nearby. Quinn is in the opposite corner to be farthest away CC bait. 
Trindamir is positioned to walk up next to Leona, so he gains resistances from her. Selko is buffing up Braum and Leona to make their impactful spells go off quicker. Moving on to some in-depth examples, against the first guy, the big threat is Malzahar. Braum is positioned to hit Malzahar with a spell. Leona will also be buffing up our frontline. Syndra is positioned next to Draven, so he can toss away the Cossacks if he gets close. Trindamir is positioned to ult into Malzahar. Against the second guy, the big threat is Seraphine. Trindamir is getting tossed by Singe to make sure our bodyguards hold the line. Draven is positioned away from our team to make sure he dodges Seraphine's spell, and also to make sure that he doesn't get hit by Orianna's spell. Syndra is positioned on the outskirt of our backline to toss away the Echo that is jumping over to Draven. Against the third guy, the big threat is Talon. Quinn is away from our team to catch the Talon. Draven is on the opposite side of where Talon is landing. Syndra is next to Draven to toss away assassins that are landing in the area. Braum and Leona are in the backline to CC the assassins jumping over. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below what video you want me to make next. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got over 7,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.